sulfur is converted to sulfuric acid eventually and becomes a solid in water. Well, this is a problem that took my numbers because the state regulations require that they keep the uh, pH of the ship in between 6 and 8. And uh, since there's always a mechanism, more and more exposed sulfur tends to lower the pH, what they need is something to raise the pH. Well, they have tried various kinds of remedies, and uh, one of the things that they do is um, buy 50% sodium hydroxide in tank car loads, and then measure the pH and figure out how much they have to drip in at how fast the rate in order to keep the pH between five, between six and eight. Uh, seven is what they would like to have, but uh, that's the pH of neutral water. But six, between six and eight are the requirements, and there's uh, enough of a lag time between when you add the sodium hydroxide and when it gets diffused throughout the pond, so that it's difficult to maintain the pH other than within those limits. So, when I found out that uh, they had to add sodium hydroxide anyway, I thought, this is an opportunity for me. I'm going to add sodium to the water. When the reaction takes place, it's going to produce sodium hydroxide and hydrogen. The hydrogen is going to mix with oxygen from the air. The reaction is exothermic enough so that we'll get a spectacular reaction. And the only byproduct, sodium hydroxide, is going to be then beneficial to the environment because the sodium ions will be spectator ions in this reaction. The hydroxide ions will neutralize the hydrogen ions. Um, John Sondrius has just uh, measured the pH of the mine ship. And, um, John, what size the pH is? 4.5. 4.5. Um, 4.5 is a couple of years ago what you'd like to keep it at, and so I'm going to add some sodium, and by the time we get done with this, uh, it'll, uh, if my calculations are correct, the pH of it should be just about 7 by the time we get done adding the sodium. Now, the sodium comes in cans, and uh, you can see the cans are like the spam cans, because uh, you have a key that you have to wind and open like this. And uh, once you look inside the can, this is a fairly new can, one that I bought only last year. Because I finally, after 15 years, ran out of all those tricks of sodium that were given to me by the chemical company. So I had to start buying sodium, so I could do this as a manual event. This is going to be the last year I'm going to do this because now I'm going to have this on videotape and I'll just show it to my students. If you look at the exposed surface, you can see it looks uh, powdery. That's because this isn't sodium, that's sodium oxide. Sodium is a very active substance that reacts with oxygen from the air very rapidly. If I cut this with a knife, you can see this shiny sodium is exposed. Can you see that? Shiny sodium? And you can also see that the grooves in the knife make ridges in the sodium because uh, sodium is a fairly soft element. And uh, in fact, if I'm strong enough, I can even bend this or at least last year I could bend this into a large two shape. Yeah, was, this year looks like it's going to crack and set. So instead of doing that, I'm going to throw it in the water. Now, Chuck is going to focus on the water halfway in between the pipe, and then we'll keep the pipe laying out there. And what you can see when this hits the water, is that the react will take place. It may set first from the momentum of the flight, and uh, then it'll fly up in the air from the explosion. Ready, Chuck? Cut this a 
way because we see the shiny sodium is exposed. Now we're going to do the same reaction as before, and what happens is when you have this curve, it tends to bounce different 